These are chapters in the creation of gospel music with the New World Gospel Choir of the Hebrew Israelites community. The Hebrew Israelites return from America to the Promised Land in the belief that here are their roots. Just like a motherless child A long way from home
Most black slaves imported into the United States came from the west coast of Central Africa. The tribes of this region had well-developed religions which played an important part in their lives. They believed in spirits. Their dominant or father spirit, sometimes called Onyimbe, served as creator, ruler, and protector. Slavery has a long and dishonorable history. The Sumerians of Mesopotamia kept slaves before 2000 BC, and the Code of Hammurabi laid down rules governing the practice. During eight years, Caesar sent back some 500,000 slaves from Gaul to work mines, plantations, and public projects. Some of these slaves became gladiators. Because of the nature of farming in the northern United States, slavery was not profitable there. It was centered in the south, where farming on large plantations formed the main industry. By 1860, there were about four million black slaves in America. This was nearly one-third of the total population of the 15 southern slave states. I need you to let Yafa know that there's going to be a Crown Sisters meeting tonight at 7. African slaves already had a highly developed religious life when they arrived in America. This probably explains why slaves took so readily to the Christian religion. You see, children, 
when you're taken away from your home and you have no land, not even a name and no culture, you become nobody, a slave. And that's what the slave master wanted us to forget, all the things that made us the, in the image of God, because we were godly people. We believe in righteousness, and was no righteousness in that land. Oh, they beat our men until they were no more, but there was no protection. Because remember that your man is your protection. And without the man, then you are open prey to everyone. Those were some rough days, my children. Yeah, I'd be glad that you wasn't there. I lived through those days. I was in the state of Mississippi. It was very hard and very cruel. And I witnessed a many hard day there. Everybody wakes from five years on, on until you were no more. That was, that was nothing to help you. You live to get an old, ripe old life, but you wait all the way through. My mother used to come wake from sun up to sundown and come home and cook and iron and get the children ready so that you could go back to the field the next day. And they didn't want you to know nothing about your past, your future, nothing. They want to keep you within the darkness in a certain kind of way that you would never be able to discover yourself from whence you came or why you were going and nothing. I'll never forget old Uncle John who run away and brought back. And they claimed he was so rebellious and the best thing it was to get rid of him to keep him from spoiling the other slave. So they hung him.
Can nobody, nobody know the trouble I see? Nobody, nobody know my sorrow. Oh, nobody, nobody know about the trouble I done see. shall forget that day oh yes lord oh yes lord when the lord he washed my sins away oh yes lord oh no man didn't know the troubles I and see nobody know my sorrow yeah nobody nobody know about these troubles I done see to convert slaves to Christianity was one of the justifications for the slave trade. When the importation of black slaves began, it was commonly believed that a Christian should not hold another Christian in bondage. This meant that upon becoming a Christian, a slave should also have been freed. In order to maintain the slave status, the legislature of Virginia in 1667 declared that baptism did not alter the condition of a person as to his bondage or freedom. This started a process of enactments and rulings which removed the Christian religion as a legal barrier to slavery in the colonies. In seeking converts, the evangelical Christian bodies, especially the Methodists and Baptists, had one great advantage. Their religion was simple and personal. To join the church, it was only necessary to repent and accept Christ as a personal savior. The religion was also characterized by such emotional elements as shouting, dancing, weeping, laughing, prostration, and speaking in tongues. These were regarded as evidence of the spirit at work and further proof of the depth and sincerity of the conversion. God Almighty for this day. For we remember... Another development that did much to shape the course of black religion was the rise of black preachers. We had to suffer the pain. Preaching was the only position of leadership permitted to blacks, and the office carried considerable prestige. But now... Being one of the people and suffering with them, the preacher was able to communicate religion to the slaves in a useful and intimate form. The church served as the main outlet through which the slaves could express their suffering and dissatisfaction. It kept alive the consciousness that the slave system was evil, as well as the hope for better days yet to come. The land of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.
Lord, let me hear you say yes. Yes. If you think the Lord loves you, let me hear you say yes. Elijah Rock at the Carmelite Monastery of St. Elijah, located on top of the mountain known as Karen Carmel. This is the traditional site of the contest between Elijah and the false prophets of Baal, described so vividly in the Bible. Spirituals were the product of a peculiar coincidence of forces, influences, and circumstances that could not occur in Europe, Africa, or among free blacks in the American North, but only among the black slaves of the American South. Clearly, both West African music and Protestant hymn singing contributed to it. However, the essence of the spiritual came from the people living in that place at that time. When the historic volume of Negro Slave Songs of the United States was published in 1867, it uncovered for the world a music that was already of the past, the historical experience of a people in an era ended by the Civil War. Oh, oh. 
let you down. In the background, the Sea of Galilee, the sea where Jesus walked on water. <laughs> Spirituals were used by the slaves as working songs, as well as for religious meetings. Much of the shiploading, rowing, and plantation work was accompanied by the singing of spirituals. When slaves gathered for corn shucking jubilees, they would sing as they marched along the roads. Unfortunately, many spirituals were never written down and thus have passed from memory. Others survive in many versions, with variations in tunes and text. During the religious services held by the slaves, audience participation was an integral part in the performance of spirituals. In the strict sense of the term, there was no audience, only singers and non-singers. The whites who came to listen might sit quietly, showing their appreciation of a performance by facial expression and applause at appropriate times. But the slaves actively participated by clapping, tapping, and constantly interjecting spoken or chanted words in order to reinforce the meaning of the text.
The development of the spiritual in the American South extended over nearly a century, from the eve of the Revolutionary War to the eve of the Civil War. Slaves attended the churches of white colonists and there learned to sing psalms sung by all Protestant Americans. When a new kind of religious song called the hymn began to take the place of psalms during the middle of the 18th century, slaves learned to sing hymns. These hymns had a direct appeal to the common feelings of the slaves, and they sang them with an inborn talent which not even the conditions of slavery could suppress. Some spirituals expressed a longing for fatherly comfort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo, 
spirituals were little known outside the southern states until blacks were freed from slavery. In 1871, spirituals were introduced to other parts of the United States by a group of blacks called the Jubilee Singers of Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. They traveled throughout the United States and to England and Germany, giving concerts to raise money for their school. Spirituals have been influential in the development of jazz, gospel music, and the blues. They endured because of their beauty and the depth of religious feelings they revealed. Perhaps the element of performance should be regarded as the single most important factor in spirituals. It is the performance that shapes the song and determines its rhythm, melody, texture, tempo, text, and finally, its effect upon listeners. This is largely due to the importance of improvisation in the African tradition. When we hear the word flood, almost immediately we think of the Bible and the story of Noah's Ark. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Genesis chapter 7.
tell me how did you feel when you when you when you tell me how did you feel when you Leaning on the Lord, in the Judean wilderness near the Dead Sea, the world's lowest body of water. On its southern shore stood the biblical cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, upon which the Lord rained brimstone and fire. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. This is a voyage through the Holy Land, to the musical roots of the spiritual, the places longed for and sung about in the songs of Zion. For the slaves thought of themselves as the modern children of Israel. They believed that they were destined to cross over into Canaan with the help of God. Many spirituals tell of the joys of Christian fellowship. Belonging to the Lord's glorious company, the slaves found comfort and protection. In Caesarea, the Roman capital of Palestine for about 500 years, it was built by King Herod the Great and named in honor of Augustus Caesar. Praise God's name. Okay, let's do it. Let's lift our voices up. Father, <laughs> open our eyes that we sing it, Ellie. Though, come on, we see to follow yeah. the Lord. Grand. Thy loving peace and let all this John see that all
heard us when we cried and you smiled on all your helpless children. Oh, Master, Father, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, don't cry. Jordan Roll is a familiar revival refrain used in many spirituals. The Jordan River was important to the slave, for as one song verse stated, on Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and pleasant land where all my possessions lie. Here Jesus was baptized. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3. The Jordan River flows from the north through the Sea of Galilee and then south until it drops into the Dead Sea. It is a small river, but in the imagery of the slave, it was the gateway to Canaan, the land of salvation.
These are chapters in the creation of gospel music with the New World Gospel Choir of the Hebrew Israelites community. The Hebrew Israelites return from America to the Promised Land in the belief that here are their roots. When the staff in his hand go fight the battle, Joshua cried, cause the victory is in our hands. The spirituals offer a collection of biblical heroes. Noah, chosen of God to ride down the flood. Samson, who tore the buildings down, Jonah, symbol of hard luck changed at last, and Job, the man of tribulations who still would not curse his God. These are victors over odds, but the losers, wretched and despised, also serve as symbols, like blind Barnabas, whose tormented cry found echoes in slave cabins down through the long dark years. One of the slaves' favorite heroes was Joshua, who caused the walls of Jericho to fall. Jericho, the largest oasis in the Jordan Valley. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So the people shouted when the priests blew with their trumpets. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city.
If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Jerusalem, sacred to Jews, Muslims, and Christians, the city of David and Solomon, of Isaiah and Jeremiah. Jerusalem, the city where Jesus conducted his last ministry and was crucified. Jerusalem, chosen 3,000 years ago by King David as the capital of the first kingdom of Israel. By the wall? Yes. Are you? From every corner of the world, people flock to Jerusalem, some for its beauty, some for its holiness, some for its history, some to work and study within its walls. But most of them come for all that and more, for Jerusalem has about it something very special, which only the human heart can feel. Rejoice with Jerusalem and exult in her, all you that love her. Share her joy with all your heart, all you that mourn over her. As a mother comforts her son, so will I myself comfort you, and you shall find comfort in Jerusalem. The Hebrew Israelites return from America to the Promised Land in the belief that here are their roots.
The same god contains a reference to nuclear destruction. At the touch of a button, the whole world is going to burn. Gospel music is the 20th century spiritual. This new rural and urban religious folk music expresses a wide range of attitudes to the trials and tribulations of modern life. Thomas A. Dorsey, a one-time blues singer and composer, is credited with inventing gospel music in the 1920s. It was a time when people were confused, bewildered, and angered by the Depression. Gospel music found its initial reception among black women, the keepers of the home and church. The Hebrew Israelites community was founded in Chicago during the early 1960s. They saw themselves as the direct descendants of the ancestors of the children of Israel. Their forefathers had not kept the law and had been punished with exile and slavery. The Hebrew Israelites believe they are chosen for a special mission to bring righteousness to the world. To do this, they have returned to the Holy Land to establish the Kingdom of God. The Hebrew Israelites are strict vegetarians. Smoking and alcoholic drink, except for natural fermented wine, are forbidden. Upon joining the community, old names are dropped and appropriate Hebrew names adopted. Today, they number more than 1,500, living in three southern Israeli cities, Demona, Arad, and Mitzpe Ramon. sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, there was a happy day. Oh, 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 happy day. When the Father was. When the Father he was. When the Father he was. He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, there was a happy day. my sins away.
The Hebrew Israelites are a religious community with a still evolving religious philosophy. They use the term Kingdom of God to describe their movement. Organized as a collective, the community is directed by a divine council of 12 princes, each symbolically representing one of the ancient tribes of Israel. The members of the council are appointed by the community's spiritual leader, Ben-Ami. The Hebrew Israelites believe that man was created in the image and likeness of God and has a mind of divine spiritual discernment. They believe that man can live in complete harmony with his fellow man and the laws that govern creation. The community is highly organized and emphasizes a strict moral code. Gospel music, the songs of Zion, an important element in the communal life of the Hebrew Israelites. But we must move on and we have a younger For them, group. righteous music is full of healing power and spiritual strength. And they're going to sing Amaze and Grave. Uh, Amaze. In musical manner and spirit, gospel songs are probably not too remote from the older spirituals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The New World Gospel Choir of the Hebrew Israelites community is a continuation of the tradition of gospel music into the 20th century. Come on, come on back out. Come on. They believe the sorrow songs of slavery were a collective plea for understanding, mercy, and forgiveness. Now, it's going to rain, fellas. Give me just one more time, it's going to rain. A sacred bond to keep alive in their hearts the hope to someday return to the Holy Land. Rain it down fire. The word of God. and I looked around and it seemed freer. I don't know, it's like a spiritual feeling and I felt freer. And I walked around the land and I was able to see many of the things that we sang, you know, because I deal with music anyway. And many of the places and the songs that we sang about were right there in front of me. And it began to be, become more reality the things that were embedded deeply within me, the songs about Jerusalem, about the Jordan, uh, all of the spirituals and what have you that we ever sang about became more real. And then as I began to be in the land and find myself more in tune with the land, it's just grown into this, this is where I feel, you know, this is where my roots are. Oh! 
Elijah Rock at the Carmelite Monastery of St. Elijah, located on top of the mountain known as Karen Carmel. This is the traditional site of the contest between Elijah and the false prophets of Baal, described so vividly in the Bible.
sometimes I see like a motherless child. Like a motherless child Sometimes I feel Just like a motherless child Just like I'm home. 